In this video, I'm going to talk about seven exciting benefits of extended fasting. What do I mean by extended fasting? Basically more than 24 hours, more than a day. Um, but some of these benefits are a little more relevant if you get into a few days or more in some cases. Now, extended fasting, of course, it's not for everyone. For some, some people either shouldn't be doing it or shouldn't do it very often. And that includes people who are underweight, people who are at normal weight or pretty lean, certainly shouldn't, don't need to do it very often. And the older you get, kind of the more important it is to prioritize muscle maintenance. So you don't need to do like a ton of prolonged fasting probably as you're aging. But for many, many, many people, it is super beneficial. And that includes those who are, are obese or have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. And I'll get into some of those details as I list through these benefits. So it's a really large number of people, probably more than half of the adults in the United States, could benefit from doing some of it at least. And the benefits would outweigh the risks for most of those people probably. All right. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the list of seven exciting benefits of extended fasting. So the first benefit I wanted to mention is a really important one, and that's that you can have a versus short fasts and versus certain other treatments, you can have a quicker and more profound improvement in blood sugar and insulin. So many, 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 many people have high blood sugar and high insulin, also known as insulin resistance. And that includes anybody with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes and a lot of other people who haven't quite been diagnosed or what have you. Most people with high blood pressure fall into this category. The majority of people with belly fat, like significant belly fat, fall into this category. So all those people, or at least most of them, can have a pretty dramatic improvement in a lot of those metabolic issues with the blood sugar and the insulin through prolonged fasting. Why is that? Well, for one from one angle, it's quite intuitive, right? If you don't eat for a while, your blood sugar and your insulin can come down to normal because it's the food, certain types of food that are kind of causing them to be high more often than not. And then also a lot of those people have fatty liver and fatty pancreas. So they have fatty deposits around those abdominal organs, which in some cases causes more insulin resistance in the liver. And that's significant because the liver makes a lot of um, the blood sugar that causes high blood sugar, you know, through gluconeogenesis. And also the pancreas won't function as well when it has all those fatty deposits around it. And it's the, the organ that makes insulin. So it's important from that standpoint. So there are various reasons why prolonged fasts will cause a of quicker and more profound improvement in blood sugar and insulin, which is very relevant to anyone who has prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, um, and basically anyone who's obese as well. It's going to have some degree of those kinds of issues that they need to, to fix. So the second exciting benefit of extended fasting I wanted to mention is that extended fasting can decrease your risk of various chronic diseases. What do I mean by chronic diseases? It's those things that kill people, right? Like the heart disease and the strokes and the diabetes and the cancer. Um, so you're going to be decreasing your risk of a lot of those things. And some of the other Things that I didn't mention, like high blood pressure and certain cholesterol problems, which then lead to the strokes and the heart attacks and so forth. So it can decrease your risk of many of those things. How does it do that? Well, the biggest reason is because it will help fix blood sugar and insulin resistance. Because the blood, high blood sugar and the insulin resistance, also known again as prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, and many of oftentimes those, that's how it manifests. Um, those things are a gigantic risk factor for heart attacks and strokes and certain types of cancer. Um, and certainly they are also related to high blood pressure and uh, metabolic syndrome, which includes certain cholesterol problems and things like that. So the extended fasting has an overall beneficial effect on many of those things and will dramatically lower your risk of a lot of those chronic disease problems, um, which can be deadly, of course, in the case of something like a heart attack or a stroke, to name one, but also just diabetes in general. Diabetes leads to death through many different routes. Um, and so if you can kind of get your diabetes under control, it's going to lower your risk of a lot of those other related chronic problems. The third exciting benefit of extended fasting I wanted to mention is breaking through weight loss plateaus or what should be called fat loss plateaus. So it's really always about fat loss, right? Not weight loss, but so people like to say weight loss, but they shouldn't be saying fat loss. Um, so breaking through fat loss plateaus. Um, so yeah, so people try, you know, this daily time restricted eating, also known as intermittent fasting. And, you know, you can lose weight through that, um, or you can reduce body fat, in other words, but it can be a little slower. And sometimes you hit plateaus or whatever. And so that's where the extended fast can be beneficial with when it comes to fat loss is they can kind of help you break through the plateaus because you have a, lo a longer period of time where you'll have the low insulin level. And when insulin is low, 
that frees up your body fat. You, you're able to tap into your own body fat stores for fuel versus when insulin is high, the body fat is locked away. So that's one of the effects of the hormone called insulin is it either allows you to burn body fat or prevents you from doing so, depending on whether it's high or low. So with those long periods of low insulin, you're able to tap into your own body fat stores more effectively. And so then you're also going to improve the insulin resistance. And so your insulin is not going to be as high after the fast either. And so then you'll be able to still utilize your body fat more effectively. And during the prolonged fast, you also maximize fat burning for a longer amount of time um, versus on a shorter fast, for example, where you're not going to be getting into that fat burning state for as long. So various reasons why prolonged fasting can help break through fat loss plateaus. Um, quick reminder, though, it's like some of these people who are lean or thin or whatever think they need to lose weight and they don't really need to lose weight. So really we should always be talking about fat loss and not weight loss, because if you just focus on weight loss, sometimes you'll do more harm than good. All right. So the fourth exciting benefit of extended fasting is autophagy. What is autophagy? Well, many people have heard of it. Many people haven't, but it's Greek for self eating because it's something where your body's kind of Recycle, breaking down and recycling a bunch of old structures, um, particularly proteins and other things made out of protein inside your cells, inside your cells. So that includes um, organelles, you know, the, the different things inside the cells, includes, includes even like viruses and mitochondria and all these different things, right? Um, so you're breaking down all these old and worn out proteins and other things inside your cells. So it's kind of like a cellular spring cleaning is one, th one way you could look at it. Um, and autophagy kind of ramps up after about 24 hours of fasting and gets to a peak level after about 72 hours of fasting. So it's, it's really when you get into those multiple days of fasting that you're kind of maximizing autophagy. So it's a type of renewal and healing and can help prevent disease diseases in various parts of the body as a result of the, uh, those improvements, um, those kind of healing benefits that happen um, during during a prolonged fast. So benefit number five, the fifth exciting benefit of extended fasting is a really interesting one that applies to a lot of people, but not everybody. And that is that um, extended fasting can imp improve autoimmune symptoms. So what are autoimmune symptoms? Well, we, when you have some type of condition where your, your immune system is kind of attacking your own body, that's called an autoimmune condition. And the ones that have been specifically studied that I know of are multiple sclerosis and Crohn's disease. And it's been shown that symptoms of those two conditions will improve with extended fasting. Um, but there are a lot of other autoimmune conditions, right? Like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus are a couple of really common ones, for example. Um, and there's a long list. Um, and it's likely that those can also improve to some extent through extended fasting. Why does that happen? Well, it seems to have something to do with the fact that after a few days of fasting, at some point around that three to five day mark, perhaps, um, your body kind of breaks down and recycles a big part of the immune system or your white blood cells, in other words. Um, and it starts ramping up stem cells to help regenerate the immune system once you're done. And so you kind of break down the immune system. And then when you finish your fast and you refeed and everything, you kind of rebuild the immune system. And when you do that, there's kind of a redistribution of the types of cells and there's not as many autoimmune cells, not as many cells that are prone to attacking your own body um, in those kinds of cases. So, um, so there's less autoimmunity overall as a result of that process. It seems that that's kind of what's driving the improvement in symptoms. There may be other things too, like lower inflammation overall because fasting helps reduce inflammation, um, but also tends to specifically reduce autoimmunity. All right, so benefit number six. Another interesting potential benefit of extended fasting is boosting growth hormone. So in at least some populations, there will be a rise in growth hormone after you know a couple days or a few days of fasting. Why is that significant? Well, of course, growth hormone helps you maintain lean body mass, including muscle and bone and other types of lean body mass. So the growth hormone rise is another interesting benefit of extended fasting. So the seventh exciting benefit of extended fasting I wanted to share is improved focus and mental clarity. So basically improved brain function and sometime, and, and also mood. So it's like a lot of things related to the brain. So it can even get to the point of euphoria. So for example, when I've done extended fasting, I often feel euphoric after a few days of that. And that's because of ketones and other hormonal changes and, and various things that are going on. 
but it, yeah, it definitely seems to have a big, uh, big positive benefit on mood and focus and clarity. It's like, I feel like I could write a book right now and I wouldn't even have to edit it afterwards or something like that. That's kind of how I felt, um, in the middle of a prolonged fast sometimes. Um, so it's kind of a unique, unique feeling. It's pretty cool. And obviously sometimes it makes it easier to get work done. Um, at home, you know, whatever I'm doing, but also when I'm at work, I work in the emergency room, it can get a little crazy. And then you're trying to juggle all these different patients and stuff. And so sometimes that's a lot easier to manage as well. Um, because I've done prolonged fasts, uh, during, you know, I've done work shifts during prolonged fasts on several occasions and found that it's kind of crazy how, how good my focus is on those days. So those are seven exciting benefits of extended fasting. And if you want to learn more about the potential benefits of fasting, I've got a playlist right here that goes over a bunch of them, including benefits of short-term fasting as well as long-term fasting. And another playlist here that has some beginner tips to help you get started with fasting, with intermittent fasting in particular, but that also then kind of segues into extended fasting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.